cast it into the fire. Try it yourself. <laughs> Destroy it. <laughs> Should have ended that day. But evil was allowed to endure. Nerdrotic.com. We received some pretty big Lord of the Rings news a couple of days ago, and while it excited a lot of people, I unfortunately was not one of them. I still have some very deep concerns when it comes to this show on Amazon Prime. And I have said in the past, if Jeff Bezos screws up the greatest story ever told, written by the greatest author who ever lived, J.R.R. Tolkien, which turned into the greatest film trilogy ever made, I would dedicate my entire channel to bringing down Amazon. This news was a plot synopsis, and I can hear you now. What's up with a plot synopsis? Usually it's a farmer goes on an adventure and they're describing Star Wars, and you'd be right. No, this one gives us a pretty good idea what direction they're taking this show in. And that direction is Game of Thrones. I would love to be cautiously optimistic when it comes to Lord of the Rings on Amazon Prime. I want it to be the greatest TV show ever made. It's the most expensive TV show ever made that we've never seen. It's been in production for almost three years, and they just finished a two-part test pilot that's in post-production. They are currently ramping up for production of season one and season two, which are being filmed back to back in New Zealand. And as you may or may not know, the show is being run by JD Payne and Patrick McKay, two guys no one has ever heard of because the only work they have ever done is a bad Star Trek film. One of the few times we have heard from this supposed J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, who I still believe are just two autons that were created by Jar Jar Abrams in the Bad Robot Labs, this was their statement. The world that J.R.R. Tolkien created is epic, diverse, and filled with heart. I've already made videos about my previous concerns. They will be linked in the description. Briefly, I will go over them here. We will start with the word diverse. We know what kind of baggage comes along with a word like this when it's associated with an already established beloved franchise that's been taken over by a mega corporation. It means accessibility, retooling, reimagining, identity politics, intersectional feminism. Mix that with the rumors of sex. Mix that with bad robot. And then you have this synopsis, which clearly tells us they are going Lord of the Rings Game of Thrones. This comes from Deadline, although the One Ring.net did break this story, and their headline is focusing on Sauron, the Lord of the Rings Amazon Studios prequel series to feature familiar villain. Amazon Studios has got its eye set on bringing back a major villain for its upcoming Lord of the Rings series. The streamer teased the new prequel series and the comeback of one of the book and franchise's major villains in a description for the new show which will be directed by J.A. Boyona and star Will Poulter. Oh, stop right there. It will not star Will Poulter from Black Mirror, although he would have been a great young Elrond, and I think this was a stupid move on his part, but he left the show, as reported by Deadline, a year ago. Robert Armeo, who you may remember as young Ned Stark in Game of Thrones. No. Now it ends. Maxim Baldry and more. The details of the new series first reported by the One Ring.net teases the greatest villain that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen. Read the series description below. Amazon's forthcoming series brings to screens for the very first time the heroic legends of the fabled second age of Middle-earth's history. This epic drama is set thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and will take viewers back to an era in which great powers were forged, kingdoms rose to glory, and fell to ruin. Unlikely heroes were tested, hope hung by the finest of threads, and the greatest villain that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover all the world in darkness. Beginning in a time of relative peace, the series follows an ensemble cast of characters, both familiar and new, as they confront the long-feared re-emergence of evil to Middle-earth, from the darkest depths of the Misty Mountains, to the majestic force of the elf capital of Linden, to the breathtaking island kingdom of Numenor. To the furthest reaches of the map, these kingdoms and characters will carve out legacies that live on long after they're gone. On the surface, it sounds pretty cool. We're going to get to see the elven smiths of Aregion forge the 19 rings of power, influenced by Sauron the Deceiver, who goes off to forge his own ring in Mount Doom. We're going to go inside the Misty Mountains. We're going to see the dwarven kingdom of Khazad-dûm, 
Moria in its prime. You saw it in Lord of the Rings in ruins. And we might see the origin of the Nine, the Ring Race, the Nazgul, who were all once kings of men who became slaves to Sauron's will, a fate worse than death. They mentioned the elf capital of Linden, which not too many people know about. And we're going to go to the fabled island of Numenor and possibly see it in its prime and possibly see its fall. This is going to be very different from The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, which are on-the-road stories, stories of companionship, stories that take place on a journey but this one is going to be set up like Game of Thrones. We're going to be following different characters in different locations who are going to converge on each other in the end. Okay, at least they have that one on George. They know where to end their story. But other than that, they aren't going to have any hobbits. There aren't going to be any wizards. They are going to have, like they said, new characters and new lands. And that's where the big problem is. This is a giant blank canvas. This takes place over thousands of years. And that giant blank canvas is going to be filled in with a couple of young, inexperienced showrunners. Does that sound a little bit familiar to you? And those untested showrunners who have admittedly an experienced writer's room with writers from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul are going to have to fill a lot of time with drama and relationship stuff modern relationship stuff and let's not even get into the dialogue which you won't be able to adapt because there really isn't any like there is in lord of the rings and the hobbit as you all know things were going great for game of thrones through season four until dan and dave passed up the books and they couldn't adapt george's dialogue anymore and they tried to interpret what george might have wanted and George is alive. They could have asked him anything at any time, and they still produced the biggest disaster in television history. How do you think it's going to go for Opie and Richie Cunningham over there? Obviously, they don't have J.R.R. Tolkien to talk to. They no longer have the greatest guardian of his father's work and one of the greatest sons who's ever lived, Christopher Tolkien, to talk to either. Yes, there's the Tolkien estate. I know nothing about the other heirs. They might just want a bunch of that sweet, sweet Amazon cash, and they don't give a crap what happens to Tolkien's story. Then, of course, there was the rumored big shift behind the scenes right after Christopher Tolkien's death. He died in January 2020, and in March 2020, it was rumored from the OneRing.net that a lot of the writers were fired, and they rewrote season one, and they removed Tom Shippey, the Tolkien scholar. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to what led to that. You can speculate below in the comments. I will say that I did receive an email from Tom Shippey's representative saying he was still involved in the project after March, but that was a few months ago. And that brings us to the politicking. Are we going to get the nihilist, postmodern, intersectional Lord of the Rings? I think this is a good possibility considering everything we've seen from modern Hollywood. Then there's the fact that we already have a nihilist, postmodern Lord of the Rings. It was called Game of Thrones. I just want a good story. I understand it's 2021. I understand changes have to be made. As long as these changes are made with Tolkien in mind, I won't have a problem with it. I just want one thing to not be affected by the NPCs, the SJWs, the Identitarians. And I don't think it's possible to adapt something by J.R.R. Tolkien, the devout Catholic who wanted to create an English mythology in this modern age, but I would love to be proven wrong. As far as my evidence that this show is going full-on Game of Thrones, well... Aside from the rumors of nudity, the hiring of an intimacy coordinator alluding to sexual acts in something by J.R.R. Tolkien, and of course the plot synopsis, which tells us we're going to have a completely different story structure that's a lot more like Game of Thrones and nothing like Lord of the Rings. Two writers with absolutely no experience at all affiliated with an organization that's already destroyed other franchises. I give you what Jeff Bezos has said. Jeff Bezos mandates programming shift at Amazon Studios. The mandate from Jeff Bezos is clear. Bring me Game of Thrones. That's the word that has the creative community buzzing this week about a major strategy shift underway for Amazon Studios' original series efforts. There was a time I would look forward to Hollywood adapting one of my favorite comics or one of my favorite books, but those days are long gone. Now I sit back and cringe as I watch them being retooled and reimagined into platforms for influence. I would love to be optimistic about the Lord of the Rings on Prime, but I can't get excited about a show written by the guys who put Captain Kirk on a motorcycle and had him beat the bad guys with Beastie Boys music. 
You have to remember what's obvious to you and I, the average fan, isn't obvious to the average billionaire or the average banker, the people who actually make these decisions. I'm not worried about Game of Thrones debauchery getting into Lord of the Rings. I'm more worried about the nihilism, the postmodernism. Like I said before, it's infected Hollywood over the last few years. I don't think they are capable of telling a story of good versus evil or a story of inspiration or hope when it comes to an already established franchise, See the Last Jedi. Again, I hope this is the greatest show ever made. I hope it raises the bar on prestige television. And it could be that, or it could be Elrond on an ATV fighting orcs to Daft Punk. NerdErotic.com, please subscribe. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking and sharing the videos. It really does help. I appreciate your time, and I'll see you in the next video.